Hello, welcome to the Rock Life Podcast. We are so excited to have you here as we are continuing to recap and remix and discuss the series that we have going on here at the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. My name is Antonio. I'm Pastor I'm here Dan. With Pastor Dan. And man, we have been having a good time unpacking. Yeah. Uh, happy Bosses Day, Pastor Dan. Yeah, no, I got I got some coffee here um, that my assistant brought me. Yeah, and so that was a a wonderful surprise. Pumpkin cookies. Wow, I'm not a big pumpkin guy. Yeah, but I I had some pumpkin cookies. And when it's a gift, you it's know, a gift. It t- yeah, tastes even sweeter. They were like the the circus cookies. You know, where they oh, have yeah. like the little yogurt yeah. covering and the yeah. little sprinkly okay. candy things. Yeah. And yeah, good stuff. So grateful for. Yeah. Wonderful people that we get to work with. Yeah, and, I got and, a text. Happy Bosses Day. I was like, whoa. Hey. Oh, kinda, what I say to you as my boss. Well, happy thank boss you. Day. It's it's a pleasure to work with you. Pleasure to, to serve. And, yeah. and happy Bosses Day to you. And you're not my yeah. boss, but, no, you know, I know you are a boss. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. At, at least of my home. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell my wife. That's good. <laughs> what is your favorite holiday, Pastor? Now? Oh, my goodness. Um, favorite. I love Fourth of July just because it's in the summer. Yeah. Well, and, okay, that's right. You know, this is, I'm sensing a theme here. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, yeah, I don't like pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather be hot than cold. But no, I, I do love it just because, yeah. you know, there's so many things surrounding it. Barbecue, swimming, oh, yeah. fireworks, no, you know, yeah. the length of the day, the yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, I, I do uh, more and more the older I get, the more I enjoy Christmas and Thanksgiving. Yeah. Just I, I love the family aspect and the you know, the intimacy. Mm-hmm. Um, I love food. Well, I mean, and Thanksgiving every once in a while runs in with Pastor Jess's birthday. This year it does. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. this year is a, a big year, you yeah. know, Thanksgiving and birthday. So yeah. I'm, I'm currently in conversation with her about what that's going to look like right, for the Roth like, family. Do I have to cook on my birthday? <laughs> she, no, I told her, I said, listen, whatever we do, if we're yeah. here, um, you're not cooking. Yeah. I'll, I'll be, I'm going to yeah. smoke a turkey. Oh, nice. Oh, man. We've had one. I remember it's been so two good. years, but it was really good. Juicy, yeah. like some people don't like the smoky flavor, mm. um, you know. It ca- it, but it captures all the juice in oh, there. Man. And it makes it very- now I'm hungry. You got to get into the center. Got to yeah. get in that juice. Well, speaking of of good food, you and I we had some Michelin star tacos. It, you know, just the 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 statement you just made. Yeah. Right, kind of bizarre. Uh, we were we were in the area. And you said that Michelin yeah. star tacos. Yeah. And I said, if we're in the area yeah. and we don't get it. Yeah. How can you shame know? on us? Right. Well, cause you think, and so I, from what I had understood, uh, because tacos are known as street food and the yeah. Michelin star is often reserved for fine dining. Yeah. Uh, so I think it was a big deal because it put a, a sense of, uh, it, it kind of clamped like hey there's like really good tacos you know what's funny i don't know that i've ever eaten at a michelin star right. restaurant well, and the establishment in which we received these tacos it wasn't like fine dining but it's no. a very quality service i tell you the the owner so yeah. yeah when we went in there the owner was running around wiping mm-hmm. counters yep. uh he was working the register at one point he was restocking yep. Uh, you know, condiments and yep. forks and napkins, plates, yeah. all that kind of stuff. I mean, and, and literally running and wiping sweat off of yeah. his brow yeah. and stopped to look up at all of the customers because there's a line. Yeah. Looked at all of us and said, hey, guys, we've been working hard. We've been getting beat up, yeah. you know, every day, but we're grateful yeah. for it because yeah. you guys are keeping us in business and making us who we are. And yeah. I mean, he just honored everybody. Oh, yeah. I was like, dude. Yeah. I, and I don't know if he's a believer or not, but the right. spiritual principle behind that, when oh, yeah. you honor, right, yeah. you will be honored. Oh, yeah. And so I could just see, man, this guy was raised right. Right. No, but the, the the statement that stood out to me was, we couldn't be where we are without you. Yes. Which is like, wow. And and especially, you know, my generation and these, we love that, right? Going to restaurants that just, oh, my gosh, we couldn't. You're it's all because of you. The, yeah. You're part of the story, um, which, in fact, there's now bashing on millennials because they talk about how even on social media um people bash it. millennials <laughs> it's like we got it from the b- generation before us now even the younger ones have the audacity. gen z's <laughs> gen z's looking at you guys like hey oh my gosh oh man but you know because they'll the gen z businesses that are taking off on social media is because they're not gonna well so what they're pointing out is millennials more inclined to really put out polished content. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, have really, cause it's high quality and tell the story. Whereas Gen Z will, the owner will be kind of like what that guy was doing. Yeah. Just taking video of him wiping the tables doing, and people love that. They yeah. love feeling a part 
uh, of something good and this guy's business has really taken off and uh, I can see why the, yeah. the quality of food Got a, quality uh, of service uh, shout out from Mario Lopez. Yes, man. Which yeah. in my generation, <laughs> Saved by the Bell, bro. You know, he recently just got a uh, star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Good for him. Yeah. yeah. So. No, he is a star, man. Yeah. That guy's awesome. But yeah, he's he got good taco and recommendations. Hasn't aged a bit. I mean, if he's yeah, <laughs> man, that's either jeans or he's doing yeah. something right in his workout routine, man. Uh, but it's good. Oh, man. Speaking of food, yeah. good food. Uh, we want to just pause for a moment before we get into the mm-hmm. content and just yeah, bring to you our spo- first time yeah. on the Rock Life Podcast that we brought a sponsor. This week's podcast is brought to you Come by on. the Men's Breakfast. The Men's Breakfast. Come on, Pastor Dan, what do we need to know about the Men's Breakfast? Oh, you need to know that it's for men. It's for men. Number one. Number two, $15. $15. Number three. Starts at 7.30 a.m. 7.30 a.m. And, and that's the breakfast is included for a whopping steal of only $15. 15 bucks. I mean, try and get that no. much food at Denny's for that no. amount. And and try ahead. and get the people right. to go with you to Denny's. <laughs> You're not going to get no. hundreds of men yeah. that are seeking Jesus at yeah. Denny's, you know, yeah. or at uh, Norm's or right. any other breakfast establishment. And we have a special guest. Oh, man. And and he's my boy. Yeah. And I love... Uh, Jeff Osborne's going to be with us, and um, he's just the best. Yeah. I, I love that guy. He's a preacher. Yep. He's a entrepreneur. Um, I mean, he was sending me pictures. Speaking of coffee, actually, yeah. the the company, which we're not going to promote the company. Right. We, we got to be careful. We get them to be sponsored. Hey, if they, they want to, sp- <laughs> if the company knows what's going on, you want to sponsor? I will gladly. <laughs> If I can get some free coffee, but um, no, no, uh, yeah, he was he was sending me pictures. Their right. their donut company, mm-hmm. uh, which is called Painted Dough. Right. So because we'll it's shout Jeff's, them out, yeah. yeah, we'll shout out Jeff's company, Painted Dough, and uh, and Chino. They're getting ready to go out in the desert and do mm-hmm. some stuff out there too. But um, yeah, they they they're working with a coffee company, and so he's sending me pictures of him tasting the coffees yeah. and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So yeah, great man of God travels the world preaching the gospel, and so he's going to be with us for the men's breakfast at the Rock Church Royal yeah. Center this Saturday. So when you hear this at the airing of this Saturday morning's men's breakfast, have you heard after that? Yep. Uh, there will be a men's breakfast eventually. Yeah. The nineteenth, seven thirty a.m. Youth Auditorium, fifteen dollars at the door. Bring somebody. Yeah, bring a man. Bring a it's going to be a good time. I mean, yeah. we, we always have a good time at the men's breakfast. Thank you to our sponsors. Yeah. Thank you to our sponsors. That was our plug. That's it. So anyways, let's get into our podcast episode as we are going to talk about part two of this series. Pastor. Yeah, Attitudes and Actions part number yeah. two. And I, I there was one analogy that stood out to me. We'll, we'll unpack it. Um, but really, the the message was talking about where we get our confidence, right, in our attitude, or, or where do we get the attitude of confidence for action? Is that yes. kind of was yeah. my takeaway? Well, I, I think, um, you know, if we could use two words with the same starting letter, yeah. confidence or cockiness, right? Yes, there's right. there's two different things, and those things can be mixed in our attitudes and in our actions. Right. And we use the sports analogy, how athletes, a lot of times, they're very confident in their yeah. ability. They, yeah. they work hard. Um, you know, and they're very confident that I can do that. You know, I have a, I have a son who is an athlete, he's disciplined. Mm -hmm. And, um, when I talk to him about certain things, he has that attitude. I can do it. I can perform. And then he backs it up Mm -hmm. in the sport or, you know, even in life, you know, I've, I've watched him in that discipline, apply the same principles for the believer. It's the same thing. We can be confident in certain areas of our life. And actually the Bible says we can boast, you know? And and it's not cockiness, it's not arrogance or pride right. in the in the sense, but it, but it is telling the story mm-hmm. uh, that God gives us to tell. Yeah. And I think that's the beautiful thing is that we do have permission mm-hmm. to boast in some areas of our lives, and we yeah. saw that through the scriptures yeah. and and through the process of going through this me- message yeah. about what that attitude looks like and yeah. how that produces the right action. Mm-hmm. Well, so what I hear you saying and what we heard in the message is even in that boasting, I, I, again, what could be either perceived, perceived as cockiness is the confidence that we have really comes from a place of faith. Yes. Right? Like uh, someone who speaks in faith is having a confidence mm-hmm. and boasting in what they believe God can do, either through them or right. in, in a situation. Like when we, you know, whether we're talking about, hey, what someone can do, like an athlete, hey, I, I perceive that we're, we're going to win. Like, mm-hmm. Are you cocky? No, yeah. I'm, I'm confident. Yeah, I, I saw, you know, uh, there's baseball going on, baseball playoffs, and they were interviewing the, the pitcher who's going to be up next. And he's like, man, I want the ball. Mm. And there was something to me. It was exuding not cock, like the, he had confidence. Like if I have the ball, yeah. good things are going to happen. 
Uh, but imagine on the other side, you're like, oh, you're cocky. Imagine if he was like, yeah, gosh, I don't know. What if I give up a lot of runs? Yeah. What if I lose the game for us? With anything in life, there's that risk. Yeah. Right? Going back to scripture, the Apostle Paul, what if his approach was not boasting in the Lord, but rather, oh, man, it, it's risky. Yeah. This could happen. I could get rejected, um, you know, for yeah. us in our lives if we didn't take the risk. But rather, we don't boast in what our skill set is. We boast in the Lord and yeah. speak faith and have confidence. Yeah, and the confidence isn't in ourselves. You right. know, when we look at an athlete that says, I want the ball, most of the time they're saying, I want the ball because I know what I can do. Yeah. Um, for the Christian, it flips that on its head and it yeah. says, I want the ball because I know what God can do. Exactly. Right. Yep. And, and, and the ball being whatever arena yeah. of life that is, yeah. you know, so we have the scriptures, he who boasts, let him boast in the Lord. Yes. I'll boast only in the cross of Christ. Yes. I'll boast in my weakness that mm-hmm. the power of Christ may rest upon me. You know, it's not about us. Yep. It's about what God can do in us mm-hmm. and through us, because yeah. when we have that attitude, yeah. I'm nothing. He's everything. Right. It's not. I couldn't save myself. He saved me. Yeah. I can't do it on my own. I need His grace. Right. Yeah. That's when the power of God comes to play, and that's when the actions proceed yeah. from that place of the attitude that says, "Man, yeah. God is everything." Well, that first point was about the cross. Yes, the cross is my story. The cross is our story. C- go into the. I mean, obviously, you you covered the point, and the analogy I was talking about was the cross. Oh the yeah. Upward, uh, the upwards in terms yes. of the religion and the cross. Uh, how I pictured it was. As the people, and you can't have one without, or you can have one without the other, but it doesn't have the same yeah. impact. Yeah, well, just to, for, for those of you listeners, I would encourage you to go back and listen to the message. But just to unpack that for right. a moment here, we talked about how the cross is made out of two beams. Right. Um, one that one that's upright, mm-hmm. and that represents our relationship with God. Right. It, it's vertical in the sense that it, it goes from heaven to earth, yeah. right? And there's a foundation that's laid there, which is Come Jesus on. Christ. Yeah. Um, and, and if that's in order, and that also provides us access to God, the, yeah. the cross is what gave us access to God. By right. faith in the work of Jesus that's completed on the cross, now we've been given access by that faith into the grace in which we stand. Right. So it, it, it allows the goods of heaven to move to earth, right? Mm-hmm. Salvation, mm-hmm. Uh, grace, yeah. peace, provision, whatever it is, you know. Um, and, and Jesus said, I'm the latter. Right. Uh, you know, that... that uh, back in the day, Jacob saw, right? right. Angels ascending and descending, yeah. right? Yeah. So things are moving from heaven to earth. Jesus says, I'm what moves mm-hmm. everything from heaven to earth. So yeah. you, our faith, it's that stable cross member that goes vertically. But then there was a horizontal one mm-hmm. that Jesus' arms were stretched out on right. that were open to the world. Mm-hmm. And that's where, you know, we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's the first and great commandment. But the second is like it, and that is to love your neighbor as yourself. And that as we open up our arms Mm -hmm. and we say, hey, the cross is my story. Well, if the cross wasn't just for God or wasn't just for Jesus himself, if it was for humanity, then our lives now can be open to reaching out to others. And, and what you were referring to is if you take one of those by itself, they become a stick, yep. right? Uh, if you take the, the relationship with God on its own without reaching out to others, it can become cold, dead religion. Yeah. And we beat people over the head, hey, you need to be better, you need to do better. Uh, and, and, and it's, it's you know, mm-hmm. it, it's religious, it's yeah. legalism. When you take the cross member... Mm-hmm. That, that's all about others and all about social things, it, it can become a social club that's void of God, right. where it's all about humanity and it's all about, uh, you know, what the world would veil as love, yeah. you know, and, and really it's, you know, the social cause that, that is void of God mm-hmm. and that has no sense of holiness or religion, and that's where it starts okaying things like sin right. in the name of, well, we love people, right? right. And so uh, that can become a stick to beat others away yeah. from the things of God. But when they come together, yeah. that's when you have the full picture and the full story is that it's about our relationship with God. And from that relationship with God flows our relationship to others yeah. and our reach mm-hmm. to others. Well, and I, and I feel like that's that's the constant battle that we're surrounding ourselves or that we see in the world, right? Because in the world, it, it, it almost like... The world wants to force one or the other. Right. Uh, and by the world, I mean our surrounding society. People. Uh, pressure. People. Yeah. Right. Like, okay, pick one. But it's, it's like, and then you can see the strategy that the enemy would not, does not want you to link them both. Right. Right. Because if you have linked them both and now you have the cross in its design and you have the power exactly. of the cross. Because yeah. 
our powers combined. I'm thinking of Captain yeah, Planet. Oh, man. Where, you know, I, 90s kids, you, right? I knew you were going to bring that out at <laughs> that moment. I was like, don't do it. <laughs> you know, you have, you, you, because you, by themselves, it's either good works. And I appreciate your vulnerability. You, yeah. you sh- shared in the message about, hey, like, I ha- this was my testimony. I had these very religious acts. I had this these religious principles yeah. that worked and I grew up this way. I wasn't doing any of those things. And many of our listeners could e- find themselves in one of those two camps where, Hey, I have been good. I, on, I stayed on the straight and narrow or man, I was far from that mm-hmm. uh, unredeemable on un- this. And, and, and in and of themselves, you just have one or the other. And so to have our attitude, our posture sure. to have the cross as our story as a first step. I mean, I mean like that, that's so foundational. Uh, in what our attitudes are going to be in our walk with Jesus, to recognize that the, sto- the, the cross is our story. Anything that we can be bold or confident in comes out of fruit yes. of that, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so going on in, in our message, Pastor, or our message, it's for all of us. It's people. ours, it's the rocks. <laughs> yeah. uh, going on in this message, you know, so what, what else is intrinsic as part of our confidence or in our attitude? Well, you know, we, we went through the message. We said the cross is my story. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people really deeply resonated with that. Right. You know, just like you were saying, uh, you know, our relationship with God and then our relationship with others. People, people uh, in, in a deep sense, especially when we talk about testimony, because yeah. it, it is our story, mm-hmm. right? It's personal and, and it's touching. And when we, when we reflect on the cross, it, it is something that, that sounds deep within us. Right. Um, I think also when we got to the third point, and we talked about that, uh, you know, our infirmity is God's opportunity. Yeah. A lot of people identify there, too, because Absolutely. we are weak people, yeah. right? And, and we know that we can't make it. Mm-hmm. I, I think if I could point out maybe, you know, the the one point in the message that probably a lot of people didn't grasp maybe the full significance of mm-hmm. is that second point. And the reason why is because it says that Christ is our wisdom. Right. Not Christ has right. our wisdom, yeah. or Christ gives us the wisdom, mm-hmm. which if the Bible does say, if any of you lacks wisdom, yeah. let him yeah. ask of God, and God will right. give it to you literally and without reproach. You can have the wisdom of God. Well, what is the wisdom of God? Right. Christ is the wisdom <laughs> yeah. Yeah. of God. Yeah. And and it's significant in a, in a couple ways, and, and this is probably where this podcast right. is good for this. So for those of you that really want to go deeper into the message and really want to see this work in mm-hmm. your life, mm-hmm. um, you know, cause many of you come to me the back door and said, Hey, I love the podcast. Thank you for it. Yeah. And I know a lot of you guys that have come and talked to me, you're students of the word yeah, and, and you're really going deep on your own, you know, cause I've had the mm-hmm. conversations yeah. with people about their Bible study yeah. or their, uh, you know, what they're doing at work with others, going through a book or, you know, different things like that. And so for you guys, this is, I think this is really where you're going to, yeah. you know, go yeah. with us in this deep place. Think about this for a second. If Christ is made for us wisdom, mm-hmm. what does that mean? You know, I, I think in first thing, wisdom and example, Christ is the pattern yeah. on the mountain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, that's a throwback to yeah. Moses, right? Because Moses saw a pattern on the mountain to build what? The tabernacle. Yeah. The tabernacle was the place where God's presence was, and it was the place of atonement, mm-hmm. which covered sin. It was also the place, the tent of meeting, where Moses went to get direction yeah. and wisdom from God for the nation. Wow. Right. Okay? The nation being the body. Right. Yeah, that's good. Of Israel. Yeah. At that time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Everybody tracking? <laughs> you you got to follow me. Yeah. We're going somewhere. Yeah. Okay. John chapter number one, verse number 14, fast forward in the New Testament. The word became flesh and dwelt mm-hmm. among us. Yep. That word dwelt, look it up in the Greek, go to a Strong's Concordance. Yep. You know, find a search tool online that gives you Greek and, uh, you know, a concordance yeah. to English. Okay. The literal translation of the welt is tabernacle. Yep. 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 Jesus tabernacled among us. Mm -hmm. Moses saw a pattern on the mountain that he put together that became the place of atonement, became the place of wisdom and direction. Jesus is now 
the New Testament, not shadow, yeah. but the substance, Come on. right? Come on. The shadows in the Old Testament. It's a picture that gives us the person the substance in the New Testament, right? Yeah. So now Pastor here we are. Man, you are preaching on the hey, podcast. Hey, come on, preach. <laughs> so now in the New Testament, Jesus Christ is our place, number one of atonement. The cross is our story. But number two, he's our wisdom. Right. He is the tent of meeting mm-hmm. where we go to to get wisdom yeah. and direction for life. Yep. If you don't know how to live life, yeah. You go to God and you ask for wisdom, and God gives you what? Jesus. Right. And how, how many times is this passed? Well, what do I do about this situation? What do I do about that situation? Yeah. What do I do if this happens? What do I do if they respond this way? What yeah. if I don't know what to do? This is the answer. Jesus is our wisdom. So I look at especially relationally, experientially, mm-hmm. socially, even financially. Mm-hmm. Jesus encountered situations that we encounter every day, and we right. say, I don't know how to handle this situation. Right. What did Jesus do? Right. You know those bracelets, everybody makes fun of them, but right. they're so simple yeah. and yet so profound. WWJD, yeah. what would Jesus yeah. do? Right. I had a friend that we went to uh, church back in the day when I got saved. He was an older guy. I worked for him for a number of years. Great man of God, since moved to Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Uh, loves horses. Yeah. And he, he said that uh, the grass grows green out there and they don't have sprinklers. Oh, wow. That blows my mind. Yeah, but, um, but yeah, I mean, so great man of God, still serving the Lord, and um, just uh, a neat guy. But but he, he said, well, wait a second. Okay, let's build on that. What would Jesus do? Well, you can know what Jesus would do. Right. Go to yeah. the Word. Right. Look in the Bible. Yep. We have the life of Jesus. What would Jesus do? Yeah. So, so he put together a Bible reading plan that we still use to this day. It's yeah. in the Rock Life magazine. Yeah. So when you come to church, if you yeah. want his Bible reading plan, yeah, you can you have go. it. Yeah. You can know what Jesus would do yeah. and read through the Bible in a year. And he's got a year plan. He's got some Old Testament, New Testament, Psalms and Proverbs mixed in for every day. That way, if you're going through a dry section in the Old Testament or something yeah. like that, you still get some Psalms and Proverbs and some yep. stuff that still, yep. you know, picks you up. So that way, when you're reading so-and-so begat so-and-so, who begat <laughs> so-and-so, who begat so-and-so, yeah. then you can get some other stuff that, right. that you know, you can make it through. So, um, so it's a beautiful reading plan. It's in the Rock Life magazine. You can pick that up and go through the Bible in a year. But we can know what Jesus would do by looking in the in the Gospels, right. looking in the Scriptures, seeing what Jesus would do. So when it came to paying taxes, what did Jesus do? He paid his taxes. Right. He didn't worry about them. Yeah. He told Peter to go fishing. Put a line out there. Yep. There'll be a coin. Pay yours and mine. Mm-hmm. Right? When it comes to when people hated on him, yeah. what did he do? Yeah. Right? He continued to serve the Lord mm-hmm. and do what God told him to do. Right. When it came to... When government leaders who were ungodly called for a meeting, but it was yeah. a distraction from his purpose, what did he do? He said, go tell that fox yeah. today and tomorrow. Yeah. I do miracles. And on the third day, I'll rise. Yeah. Right? He stuck to his purpose. He didn't get sidetracked. Mm-hmm. You know, there might be things that you're encountering and you're dealing with that, you, that you're, you're, you're going, man, I don't know what to do in this situation. Look at the life of Jesus and see how he handled it. And you may get the answer that you need. Now, if you don't get the answer that you need, the neat thing is, is that we have a high priest right. that we can go to and talk to. Yeah. We can enter into the very throne room of heaven and talk to our king. And when we ask for wisdom, God will give it to us. Yes. We, we have the Holy Spirit who can speak to our hearts and say, this is the way, walk in it. Mm-hmm. You know? And I think that's, that's, that's where, when we talk about going deeper, right, into this message, we understand, man, I'm weak. Yeah. I can't do it. God, I need your grace, right? Yeah. I'll boast of my infirmities. I don't know how to make a great marriage. I don't know how to raise my kids. Man, I, I'll, I'll be the first guy in line to say that, yeah. right? We know the cross is my story, man. I couldn't save my... That middle one. Right. Man, it, it just... Christ is made for us right. wisdom. Yeah. Uh, man, that, that you, could, you could end it there because, because of the fact that <laughs> as you take your... Um, be, because, and I wonder, Pastor Dan, because, okay, the, maybe it's the second part. I have this question. Yeah. Because there's the listening, we know, and then there's the o- obeying. Yeah. So it's one thing, okay, we, okay, great, he's our wisdom. Oh, great, he's going to give me the answer. The tough part now is, you got the answer, apply it. Yes. The application of right. said answer. The application of said wisdom. Mm-hmm. It's like, was like the knowledge to, what is it? It's like uh, knowledge are the is the bullets. Wisdom is knowing when to shoot. Oh, right. I've heard it like that. Where huh. you so it's kind of like the applied answer. So you right. you go to God, 
get the answer. Right. Now here's our wisdom in when to apply that that answer or obeying. There's right. Listen and obey. Listen and obey. Right. And and that's where the attitude from right. part one comes in right. that I'm I'm preparing not only to know and learn but now to do. Yeah. Um, Pastor Jim used to say this. He said that wisdom is the skill to apply the word of God to any and every situation in life. Right. So it's a skill. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about athletes, right? Yeah. Yeah. And in the same way, there's a skill that they have to be able to apply what they know about how to move their bodies or whatever that is to yep. the situation right. of their their sport, their discipline, if you will. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, it's the same with us. When we have the wisdom, it's not just the answer to know what to do yeah. and how to do it. It's 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 the skill to apply. Right. Yeah. Uh, Jesus said wisdom is proven by her children. Mm hmm. We say it like this, the proof's in the pudding. Yep. Right? Yep. A and so I think that's where it's not in the knowing, it's in the doing that you're going to see what wisdom is. Yeah. Right? So so when we say, hey, I have the wisdom of God, mm -hmm. okay, if you do nothing with it, it doesn't do you any good. Mm -hmm. But if you have the wisdom of God and you apply it, that's where now the proof is in the pudding. Wisdom is proven by yeah. her children, right? Yeah. Uh uh, wisdom was rejoicing at the sight of God when he created the earth, but he was creating, he was moving and doing, and wisdom was rejoicing because now not only the knowledge of how to put together things on the planet, now the application of what was moving forward. Yeah. Same thing in our lives. Uh, wisdom will rejoice at our side because Christ is our wisdom, Yeah. right? He's with us in this life, Yeah. guiding us. Mm -hmm. You'll hear a voice. I think it was Isaiah said, walk in the way. Do not turn to the right or to the left, right? This is the way, walk in it. Uh, that still small voice, that still that inner witness that tells us yeah. the peace of God that leads us. We will have guidance for life. Mm -hmm. Now, in that guidance, we're not always going to be able to do everything that we know yeah. wisdom is telling us to do. Yes. That's where the grace yeah. comes in. God, I can't. The power. Yeah, the power. Right. You can, yeah. right? Strength to do it. That that God will produce that in and through us when we yield ourselves and say, God, I'm weak, become strong in this area. And, and I, that's probably where a lot of us have the crossroad, right, of here's the issue. Now I got the wisdom. I know what to do, but I just can't get I'm in the old flesh wants to come up. And Weakness. I cuss that person out or do yeah. this, e even though I know this is not right. Or, But now you're saying the grace, the empowerment to actually see it through. Uh, and, and so many of us will miss the mark there, right, or will yeah. fall short there. But that's where you repent, you get yeah. up and you come back, you know, and, yeah. and don't let failure be final. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the cross tells us that. Exactly. Come on. It's a resurrection. Let me yeah. preach, no, man. Come on. Come on. Come on. I feel like preaching <laughs> today. I don't know and, why. Well, and I love that. Well, let's go. Let, let me let me go to this question that comes out of. And I think it's a good segue into the third one, because we talked about the infirmities. Yeah. And, you know, you, you I, I love how you said that, uh, how how the the. Point one and point three are probably a lot uh, really relatable because they resonate. Yeah, people identify, yeah, and they understand that. And and I think of the issue of the infirmity part because all uh, oh yeah no, I don't know that we ever have a hard time finding people with similar infirmities. The mm. challenge goes not camping out there. Yeah. Like how many times have you heard of like oh yeah well yeah well, I found you know for a young man struggling with maybe pornography. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's probably not very difficult for one young man to find another young man struggling with the same thing. Sure. And like, oh, well, let's keep each other accountable. And all of a sudden, here we are. We started our infirmity club and we don't really go anywhere because we just kind of found or the same marijuana, whatever it might be, yeah. you know, s sleeping around. And all, all we did was find people that we can now discuss our <laughs> infirmities with or try to maybe help us feel OK or better about, hey, still in the struggle, man, still in the struggle. So how do we take now? this attitude mm -hmm. in confidence and now finding the wisdom. And now we, we recognize this infirmity, but I don't want to camp out here. Right. I, I don't want to stay here because otherwise, you, you know, you, you, you know, thinking of uh, when Jabin was here at conference, talking about that walking with the limp. Sometimes you turn that limp into something that you just kind of have that swag with. It, it becomes part of who you are now yeah. instead of overcoming that infirmity. Well, you know, talking about the grace, right? Because we say, in my weakness, he's made strong. And so it's it's not about just being weak mm -hmm. and then never doing anything with it. Right. The Apostle Paul said that that I worked harder than them out mm -hmm. all. Yes. Come on. He put there in everything is. he had and God put in everything he had. There it is. 
And, and that's what made the difference. And he said, yet not I, but the grace of God that was in me. What is he doing? He's actually acknowledging that even the amount that he put in, he's still giving glory to God for. But he still worked hard. He yeah. still suffered. He still right. endured. He still fought. You know, and, and, and he said, I've fought the good fight. Yep. I've finished the race. I've kept yep. the faith. Yep. Right? How did he do that? By the grace of God. Yep. Right? But, but he put in what he had in order to get to that point to where yep. the grace could become effective. Yeah. He says, I did not receive the grace of God in vain. Yep. Right? That, that shows me, ooh, yeah. I'm in danger of receiving the grace of God in vain. Yeah. Because if he said, I didn't, that means some may have. Yep. Someone else could say, oh, I did receive the grace of God in yep. vain. I didn't do anything with it. Yep. Right? I, I never used it. I never allowed it to flow in my life. I, I didn't yield. Mm-hmm. I went back to my vices. Yeah. You know, I may have confessed my faults one to another. It says that you may be healed, right? Yeah. Um, you know, so we get that. But then if we go back, like a dog returns to its vomit, mm-hmm. a pig to its wallowing in the mud. Yeah. There comes a place where we have to forsake those things which are behind us to grow up. You know, yeah. when I was a child, I, I acted like a child. I thought like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things, yep. right? It, that, that's us, by the grace of God, putting those things away. Yeah. I was in Philippians recently. And, you know, we know Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ. Through Christ. Now, the scriptures before, interestingly enough, he's talking about kind of shouting, shouting them out like, hey, you guys helped me out. I appreciate that. But there was a time I didn't have what I needed. Right. And I learned how to do without. Yes. So I've learned how to do these things. As, and he's li- as he's listing the things that he's basically the infirmities that he's overcome. Yes. Then he c- lands on, but I can do all things through Christ. Mm-hmm. So there's still the, you know, the grace of God that came on him and the living it out through. So otherwise right. I learned to live with lack because I had lack and I pushed through. Right. In other words, I didn't stop at the infirmity. He didn't quit when there was no provision. I just right. learned how to be hungry. Yeah. I, I learned how to uh, work with w- work with the challenge. And I think that's encouraging to us as believers because, hey, the troubles will come. Right. And we will have heartache. We will have disappointment. We might have a time of unemployment. We might have time where we're not getting along with our spouse or we feel like our children are not doing what we want. Yeah. But we can move on in that, and there's gr- and His grace is sufficient, and right. we can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. We're weak at those moments, yeah. And Christ's strength empowers us, absolutely. And I, man, I, I, I love where we're going in this series, Pastor, because our attitude, our our attitude, yeah. and I, I'm getting that I'm getting that line from a, a Remember the Titans attitude reflect leadership. Uh, <laughs> meaning because good movie. so yeah, yeah. It, because and it makes me think of like here we are we are being led by the holy spirit and so we can take on the as he leads his attitude yes. says in the hard times we we push through right so i'm gonna take that on as well right our leadership as we being are we are being led is saying we push through hard times yeah we don't quit in hard times uh, we, we don't we don't quit we see the cross we see that we can get our wisdom mm-hmm. and we can see that these infirmities we push through. Yeah, the grace is I don't camp is out in my infirmities. Yeah. yeah. I don't start a club for my infirmities, right, of our issues, right? Like right, no, we, no. We, put, we push through them. Yeah, I saw a stupid T-shirt that said, I'm a Christian, but I cuss a little. You know, and it's <laughs> like, if you have to put a butt eye on the end of your, I'm a Christian, like, you, you, you are a butt, you know, like, <laughs> don't do it. Right, right. You know. Yeah, yeah. So, Be- yeah. Because we're continuing, as, as, as it's, assuming that it's okay to stop there. Right. right? Like, you yeah, think, no, we don't stop. Yeah. Right. We don't stop. We submit our weaknesses to the power of the Holy Spirit, and we mm-hmm. allow God to move in those weaknesses and those yeah. infirmities, right? That's that's where grace comes in. So it empowers us. Mm-hmm. Well, Pastor Dan, you know, as as we kind of conclude, land the plane here, we know we're getting into, is uh, this weekend, are we getting into another attitude? Are yeah, we, okay. you know, I know we talked about, are we yeah. two, yeah, are yeah. we three? Yeah. I have a third one in okay. me. yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Come Ooh. on. Come on. You you want the word? Yeah, let's go. The, here's the one word we're going to discuss. Okay. The attitude of, here's the word, hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Ooh. The mask. That's a big one. That we put on. Yeah. That veils the attitude mm-hmm. and the action. That's when exciting. when our When our masks don't line up with what we're made of mm-hmm. or what we're making. Yeah hypocrisy 
You know, I love these tougher things because they're not intended to bring shame. No. In, in fact, the contrary, freedom. to lift the shame. Yeah, have freedom. Freedom. Yeah, and, and the Apostle Paul, if you want to read ahead in Romans, yeah. you can read ahead. Uh, what did we read? 17 through 20 this past week? I think we ended yeah. at 20. 20, yeah. So if you want to read Chapter ahead, two, verse 20. start in verse 21 and start reading. Yep. And you're going to find out where he talks about it. Yeah. Do you do this? Yep. You say this, but then you do that. Mm -hmm. he, start, he starts getting into it and he gets specific. Right. So if we're squirming in our chairs. It's all right. Next week we'll have this conversation and this is all right. It's, Listen, it's, I'll yeah. be squirming <laughs> saying it. And I got to check my heart because yeah. I'm like, am I being hypocrit Ooh, hypocritical? You know, like, I, again, Pastor Jim was my mentor and he said this. He said, if there's ever hypocrisy in the pulpit, you'll lack the power of God. Wow. But if there's no hypocrisy in the pulpit, yeah. then you'll have the grace and the power of God available right. to you. Yeah. He, let me be unhypocritical. Right. I right. even after I become a Christian, probably you know I've I've sinned more after being a Christian than I did Come before on. because yeah. I was 15 when I got yeah. saved. You yeah. know, so I've had a whole lot longer yeah. to sin. <laughs> I am not perfect. Right. Uh, I got to deal with my own heart. Yep. I am a sinful man in the yep. flesh. I'm redeemed in my spirit, and yeah. I'm a saint. But I still right. fight that fight. Yeah. And and have to strive against sin. And so when I get up this weekend and talk about hypocrisy, I'm not pointing the finger at anybody. Right. Yep. As much as I am at myself, yep. right? You know, they always say, you know, you got one finger pointing at you and three mm. pointing right back at yeah. you. Absolutely. Let me just get the whole hand right. going this way. Well, we welcome. I mean, it's so good. I heard it said, you know, as we starve our flesh, Ugh. you know, like yeah. constantly having to starve our flesh. And that's. I, like, I, I think the example. What dog are you yeah. feeding? Remember that <laughs> come one? On, yes, yeah, there's I two dogs it. fighting. Which yeah. one wins? Whichever come one on. I feed. Yeah. Come on. That's when that gets bigger too, and and we build up our spirit, man. Not live in the flesh, yeah, but in the spirit. Yep, man, I love it, Pastor Dan. Hey, you know we opened up the comments um, in our videos, so we'd love to hear your feedback. Yeah. To get get your comments, questions. Uh, we are really having a great time, and uh, maybe we'll have some special guests. You know, in case that you're uh, tired of me, <laughs> no, uh, um, but or me. I, I think I think we can. Um, have a, or maybe add a guest. I think I think we can do some fun, fun things and uh, increase our conversation because these are really good. I know I always enjoy. I know that you know love hearing the feedback. Share, like, comment, subscribe, subscribe all of it. Uh, we love you guys. God bless you. Can't wait to see you in church or here online. God bless you guys. Blessings. <laughs>